What's going on everybody? Good afternoon. I got a good one for you. Got a Freightliner Cascadia with the DD15. It is a 2014-2015. Customer states he's got a boost issue. Low boost, low power, something of that nature. So I'm going to plug in. I'm going to show you guys what I see for the codes, but I'm also going to show you guys what we found just doing a quick little simple uh, test. Now you can do a CAC test a couple of different ways. Um, sometimes you can just fire the truck right up use a little bit of soap and find out if you have a leak there on the CAC, which is what we did. The other thing you can do is CAC tester and go that route. Either one is gonna work fine. I think we'll do both just for the sake of the video. So we do have a code ENG1. We do have the malfunction light, which is letting us know, hey, a little tattletale, something's going on. So let's fire it up. I'm gonna move the truck over. We're gonna hook up the CAC stuff and go from there. I'm gonna show you what the codes are as well. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, here we go as promised. We have fault codes, MCM fault codes. So first two things we look at, MCM, intake manifold pressure too low, fault code 102 FMI 18, low air, SPN 2631 FMI 1. Those are the ones I looked at the most. Typically when you see that, it could be turbo, charge air cooler, EGR sometimes, or even something on the one box. So. That's what I wanted to look at first, and that's why if you look at this video, which I'm going to show right now, that's the first thing we did is check the CAC. So we have to start there. It doesn't mean we don't have other problems, but that certainly means what, where we're going to start, okay? Just to give you an idea of what we got to do. So, truck itself, like I said, Freightliner, GD15, 2015, it's got 832,000 miles on it. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move it over. We got to start with getting the CAC out. Uh, I'm going to test it really quick just for the sake of the video, and uh, we'll go from there. So okay, guys, so I got the old charge air cooler out. We're going to go ahead and test it. We're going to pressurize the CAC just to show you guys for sure that we, in fact, have a bad CAC. That should solve our problems. Uh, that is our replacement CAC. Now, it is an aftermarket one just because the OEM one is hella expensive, so we're going to go aftermarket. I've used aftermarket before, and I've had pretty good... Uh, success with it so what we're going to do now we're going to tape off one end or plug one in we're going to connect the other end and you're going to put about maybe 25 uh about 20 25 psi max and it's got to hold it if it does not hold it then obviously you know the cac is no good very simple let me get the other adapter that i need we're going to uh, hook it all up and okay, go guys there. and this is the little adapter that you're going to need this is what's going to go to the cac side you're going to use your regular tire gauge thing and again, you're gonna pump it up to about 20, maybe 25 PSI max, no more than that. It's gotta hold it for a certain amount of time. There's a little chart that you're gonna to have to go with. So let's go ahead and hook this thing up and we're gonna go from there and we'll put some, uh, we'll put a little bit of Fabuloso on it and see if we get any bubbles. If we get bubbles, then we know this thing's probably no good, but let's find out. I'll keep you guys posted. Okay guys, we're gonna go ahead and hook it up. Uh, our, our pressure gauge thing ain't working. I don't know what the hell's going on with it, but. It's not seated proper. Lale. There you go, guys. So right now, take a look at the gauge. It's pushing 15 PSI, but look at that. So that's just with with that amount of, sorry, Joe. Okay, so right now we're at about 20. And so you imagine under load, how much boost you're gonna have Let's see if it's actually dropping. Hold on, guys. Yeah, I don't see it holding very well. So we were at 20, and now we're dropping down to 10. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to record and get all this shit done. Hold on. Let's do this right. Okay, guys. So we put about 20 PSI, and this is where it's at now. Sorry. We're all over the place here. It's dropping and dropping and dropping. So we're going to go ahead and give it another. We're going to get it up to 20 again. Dale otra vez a 20. And then you're gonna see for yourselves, guys. Are you? We're at we're at 25 right now. Ya está bajando. Okay, and it looks like it is dropping, guys. So we're at 20, 25, and where are we at now? 15. You can see a lot of suds, a lot of bubbles. So could you imagine this thing under load? Look at that side. Okay. 
yeah, we got a lot of bubbles. So definitely a bad CAC. So we're gonna get the new CAC on there, put this all back together, and then we're gonna go ahead and retest everything, road test it, and we should be good to go. But again, if you had a boost leak, that's the first thing you have to address, guys. Yep, there you go. So we're gonna get the new CAC mounted. We're gonna put it on the radiator, get all that stuff back in that truck and go from there. Everybody say hi to Chavo. Saluda Chavo. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys, check it out. Got the new CAC installed. We are gonna go ahead and get that radiator assembly back into the truck. Now, some of you guys are saying, why don't you just do it there? You might be saying that, you might not. Uh, I feel it's easier just to get the whole radiator out. It's a lot faster for us to do it that way. I don't think there's enough room to make the turn when you take the radiator, I'm, I'm sorry, the CAC out because the CAC, uh, CAC has to come out from one side and then come out from the other. So I don't know if you would have enough room there. You may or may not, but again, everyone does it differently. So again, replacement CAC is there. Everything's all ready to go. Let's get her done. So one thing I'm gonna do is replace the radiator uh, little mounts that are down there. I think it's a commonly overlooked part. So I'm gonna go pick those up from the dealership right now. They're fairly inexpensive guys. So in my opinion, it's a nice little insurance if you can get that replaced and get it done.